Good afternoon parents, judges, and fellow contestants. I'm here to share more than mere words, but to remind you of the amazing power we share as Americans today. My words today are driven by a quote by Richard Nixon. We must always remember that America is a great nation today, not because of what the government did for people, but because of what people did for themselves and for one another. This quote stands out and should remind Americans of our own importance. We are powerful and our four family created our government. And we, as strong as they were, need to remember the power within us. The Constitution begins with, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. These words, we the people, more than any others, demonstrate the importance of the role of keeping our America great. The Constitution does not begin with, we the government. America is not just me, nor you, it's all of us. For without people, there'd be no government. We must be responsible citizens and act for ourselves. We must take part in our country's future, not sit back and watch what happens, because the government is not going to hand success to us. But if we dream, then we must achieve and succeed. In so doing, we will serve ourselves and others to keep this great nation going. This country's power is within people's hands and through our own hard work, not just through times of tragedy, but even through our triumphs. Nixon's quote should be timeless and is worth digested, perhaps even so more than ever before in history. We, the people, cannot just sit around and expect the government to act without our attention and focus, because without action by people, nothing that we wish is going to change, good or bad. America is not perfect, but I love my country. I know I must do my part no matter how small to keep my America great, even by the simple act of pondering and reflecting upon one of our nation's leaders. Strong Americans, people who make what's wrong or right, people who make what's good or better, people who make what's better or best. That's why we're called Americans, because we work together to make ourselves a better country. America, Americans keep our country going, and I'm proud to call myself an American, because we are important. We are the power, and we created our government. We, the people of the United States, and we're here with maybe in a perfect union, but if we remember Nixon's words, we must always remember that America is a great nation today, not because of what the government did for people, but because of what people did for themselves and one another. If we remember these words, maybe we'll be that perfect union. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, judges, fellow contestants, and audience members. My name is Elise Smokey, and today I stand before you sharing my thoughts regarding equality. The way equality affects people is tremendous. Equality is not, is not limited to gender. It extends to socioeconomic equality and racial equality. Take African Americans, for example. They were banned from participating in professional sports, going to school, and even voting for a very long time. Eleanor Roosevelt was our nation's first lady from 1933 to 1945. During her tenure as first lady, Mrs. Roosevelt wrote a newspaper column entitled, My Day. It was in this column that she penned the quote, without equality there can be no democracy. Mrs. Roosevelt made this observation in 1944, referring to the inequalities experienced by the poor, by immigrants, and by women. The only thing this political icon wanted was for everyone to everyone to be equal, regardless of social status or gender. I feel the theme of inequality is one that has been nearly constant throughout our nation's history. Our nation was founded on the idea that all men are created equal. However, since our, since our country's formation, different groups have struggled to have their equal rights. In 1920, after over 50 years, 
Of protesting, lobbying, and several unsuccessful tries, the 19th Amendment to our Constitution was finally passed, giving women the right to vote. The Civil Rights Act of 1965 gave the same right, because up to this point, that ethnicity was faced with the difficulties of polling taxes and literacy tests just to cast their vote. But voting isn't the only inequality that has existed. Other limitations have been equal pay, education, and even athletic participation. Equality is a very important part of democracy. You may even call it an integral part of it. Without equality, only men, whites, and the wealthy get to decide what's right, what's wrong, which, which laws are passed, and who vo whose votes count. Mrs. Roosevelt was right. Without equality, there can be no democracy. If we are not all given the same equal rights, the same equal votes, our country's democratic system would fail. Even if your preference is different from others, it still deserves to be heard, no matter what your gender, race, or financial status might be. If we are not all heard equally, there can be no democracy. Thank you. Hello, parents, teachers, and judges. Let me ask you a simple question. What kind of country is America? America is set to be the land of dreams and opportunities, and also to be the place where people can envision themselves to have happy and successful lives. I believe America is a great country, full of equality, rights, and freedom for everyone who is our borders. That is why I'm proud to be an American. Two of many benefits America gives me are the rights featured in the First Amendment, such as freedom of speech and free exercise of religion. Without my beloved freedom of speech, chances are I wouldn't be standing here in front of you wonderful people today delivering my opinion on our country to you. And with our free exercise of religion, most Americans and I wish to practice our own religion without getting told it's the wrong one and or suffer for incorrect practice. I also believe most Americans will dislike practicing a religion that does not seem right to them. America gives me an education to become a successful leader in the future no matter what my gender. In some countries, they won't let girls receive the proper education they deserve. Take, Af take Afghanistan, for example. They let girls go to school, but they do not receive the proper education they need. But in Iran, they won't let girls go to school at all. The thing that really bothers me is that in some countries, they won't let women do anything or go anywhere without being accompanied by a male. America had a severe problem about race many years ago, but thanks to Martin Luther King Jr. and many other patriots, most Americans could sleep tonight knowing that we're treated as equals. Here, I'm treated like everyone else in this room, even though my ancestors originated from a different country. America gives me a home, education, and food, even though I originated from a different country also. America is the country I love, and I'm proud to be an American here. They give me free Free freedom of speech, free exercise of religion, rights my race, rights me as a girl, and many more I cannot name. I just want all of you to be thankful for your rights and freedom and do not take them for granted. I also want you to consider what John Wooden stated. Consider the rights of others before your own feelings and the feelings of others before your own rights. Thank you. Hello fellow contestants, parents, and judges. I'd like to start off by saying guns and firearms have been around longer than we can remember, but they've also been misused for as long as they have been around. Nowadays, no one looks forward to looking at the news out of fear that guns have been misused and that someone is no longer on the earth. It makes this wonderful nation and me so sad to see another wonderful American citizen go before their time. I believe that it has come time to rise up and defeat the enemy within our own country. I believe that it has come time to control the use and retail of firearms. One of my ideas on how to control the selling of guns is to have the government own all gun and ammunition shops. Now I know that many of you might freak out when I say that, but it might actually work. If the government owned all gun shops, they could possibly put track in, they could possibly keep track of who they sell their guns to and possibly put tracking devices in the guns to see if they end up being misused, and they could make people take tests to see if they're worthy to hold a weapon in their hands. These are my ideas on how 
the selling of firearms could be stopped, and I hope that someday they might go into effect. Did you know that almost sev two times every month I look up at the beautiful American flag and find that it is a half mast waving sadly, honoring a tragedy that happened that day? It fills me with a strong sense of grief and sorrow whenever I see that our American flag is limply hanging at half mast instead of waving proudly and declaring our nation's freedom at half mast at the top of the pole. If we could control the use and retail of guns, we could stop our nation's proud flag from drifting limply in the breeze because of the loss of an amazing American citizen. I am not only addressing the issue of someone misusing a firearm on someone else, but on himself or herself. I feel that no life is worth losing, no matter how terrible it may seem. I also feel sorry for that person who got so depressed that they thought that the only the option they had was ending themselves. If the government owned all gun shops, they might be able to stop more suicides by having a psychiatrist interview the customer to see if he or she was having problems or not mentally stable. In conclusion, I would like to say that guns should be used properly for protection only. I feel that if we as a nation could put a stop to tragedies such as Sandy Hook or Columbine and make this country a better place for us and future generations, we would truly be showing our patriotism and thankfulness toward this land we call home. Thank you. Hello judges, parents, and fellow contestants. Most people know of Abraham Lincoln and that he was the 16th President of the United States of America. Some people think he said, I like to see a man proud of the place in which he lives. I like to see a man live so that his place will be proud of him. Actually, this quote was just attributed to Mr. Lincoln. When I think of this quote, I think of a football game. The cheerleaders are always showing that they are proud of their school. However, the football players are making their school proud of them by their actions on the field. We can be like the cheerleaders or we can take action like the players. As a citizen in America, you can do many little things, such as flying a flag, and not just any flag, but the American flag. What about the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence? Say thank you to a member of the military or do community work with family or friends. Three jobs that make America proud include service in the military. It doesn't matter if it's Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines. The second job we respect is the policeman. When a disaster happens, they are the ones that protect us. They make us proud every day by helping keep us safe. The third job is a firefighter. Remember when the 19 firefighters died in the Yarnell Hill fire? Well, it was those 19 and many others that saved the community and made us all proud. According to the United States Census Bureau, about 317 million people are in the USA. Out of those 317 million people, about 1.5 million are in the military. That leaves us about 315 million other people that can still make America proud by our actions. Thank you for your time and consideration. Welcome judges, peers, audience, teachers, and fellow contestants. My name is Taryn Smith and I would like to share a quote Joe Barton once said. Our flag honors those who have fought to protect it and is a reminder of the sacrifice of our nation's founders and heroes. As the ultimate icon of America's storied history, the Stars and the Stripes represents the very best of this nation. Today, we all here live in a free country, the United States of America. A lot of other countries may not have our same rights and privileges. On my opinion, too, our flag honors those who have fought to protect it. The U.S. Army, Navy, anyone who serves, they use their time and responsibilities to fight and protect, such as when Francis Scott Key had written the Star Spangled Banner the flag was still there. These people leave loved families to serve for our country. 
That shows the responsibilities and careness they have for our country today. Freedom, sacrifices, also the flag. The stars and the stripes represents the very best of this nation. The stars, 50 individual freestanding stars representing our states, and the stripes, 13 alternating red, white, red, representing, representing our flag originally started originally started with 13 stars on our original flag and um, representing our colonies now with the 13 stripes anyone out there serves respects this country and the flag showing honor for you as they respect it the flag respects them the sacrifice those people they gave they fight to protect as it says our nation's founders and heroes Today, we have free rights to choose a free religion, where we want to live, and we should all be very grateful. For conclusion, one last time, our flag honors those who have fought to protect it and is a reminder of our nation's founders and heroes. <laughs> think about that, and let's thank and appreciate those who fight and protect our free country, the United States of America. Thank you for your time. Good morning, fellow contestants, parents, and our judges. I am here today to tell you what does America mean to you. Now, have you ever thought about that? Do you think about our soldiers out on the fields fighting for our freedom? Like our former president, Harry S. Truman, once said, America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on immigration, and an unbeatable determination to do that job at hand. Now, this quote inspires me in many ways. They, the soldiers, were risking their lives, and we, had to and we are here to this very day just because of our powerful nation. Just look at our grand old flag. Now, what do you really see? I see a beautiful flag representing a beautiful country, America. I see red stripes re representing the war, blood, and courage. I see white stripes representing innocence, purity, and liberty. And I see a blue field going along with our 50 white stars representing our 50 states. I am proud to be an American, aren't you? We don't have kings, we don't have queens, and we certainly don't have any rules to tell us what we have to do on our daily schedule. We are America. We are a brave country with a valuable history. I, for one, think America's greatness has no limit. Hundreds of people come here every day, and each one of you make up America. America gives each one of you guys in this room um, freedom with an education, and America lets each one of you come here to become, start a fresh and new life. Being an American is a blessing for me and should be for all of you. And if you ever have time, go ahead and look at our grand old flag. And remember our veterans, our soldiers, and our powerful nation, giving each one of you the freedom you all deserve. Thank you all, and may America always be in your heart. Every single person in this room is capable of having an idea. But the very best of us are capable of having revolutionary ideas. These ideas are bold, fresh, the ones that can change the way we live. While strong American leaders contributed greatly to America's growth, the true success of this country derives from the bold expressions and ideas that some individuals shape for the nation. There is no limit to the greatness of America, once stated by former President of the United States, George Walker Bush. Hello fellow contestants, judges, and peers. I'm Arship Dinoa. Before I begin discussing the power of notions, we should all know that a great idea cannot exist without a great opportunity. Opportunities dwell everywhere here in America, where options are accepted, and they are the most important thing you can receive. 
Immigrants travel the hardest of journeys to come to the United States to gain success, resources, and to just live better lives. This is one of the greatest opportunities you can have in life. Many influential figures throughout history used thoughts and ideas. Whether they were big or small, they were intended to improve America. Without Abraham Lincoln, America wouldn't be in one piece. And without Thomas Jefferson, we wouldn't have any of the rights we have today because of the dedication he had of writing the Declaration of Independence. All of us, the residents of the United States, are lucky to be born self-governed and to die self-governed. America wouldn't be the dream country it is today without its historical figures and how they thought. Ideas have slightly altered America, but they also affected the people, including me, the rest of the nation, and possibly you. America is a thriving country and notions brought it to the top very quickly. This is because our nation has a wide variety of exceptional careers and people who master them. By knowing these people can master their professions, I'm inspired. So think America, do you have an outstanding idea that may start out small? but can end in a glorious success. America has risen and fallen to several heights because of people's ideas. We too can be like many other heroic figures, constantly fighting for what we believe in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is vital, to catapult our ideas and aspirations into a future of continuous fruition. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, judges, teachers, students, and my fellow Americans. My name is Adam Santoy, and I have a question to ask you. Do you have a dream? I know I do. I want to be a firefighter, and in America, I can be that. Not because I can be a firefighter, but because I have the options to be what I want to be and to reach my goals and dreams. Our country has something that other countries don't, and that is freedom. And with freedom, you can reach your goals and dreams and do anything you could put your mind to. And with that, there's no limits to greatness of America's George Washington Bush. Let's talk about some people in my leg, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, he created the light bulb. It took him a thousand times before he could make it work. But this just shows that your goals are achievable with hard work and determination. Barack Obama, he is the 44th president of the United States. Obama went to attend law school where he became the first African American president. He was a middle class uprising in a strong family. He achieved his goal in the United States because we have more opportunities than other countries. These two people have something in common. They both had dreams and high goals. Both of their dreams and goals seem highly unaccomplishable. But in America, it's not possible. Why? Because we have freedom. And anything you can put your mind to, you can do it with hard work and determination. And I'll take advantage of all the great opportunities America has offered me. This is why I'm proud to be an American. This is why I love America. Thank you for your time. Greatness. What does that word mean to you? Well, according to Webster's Dictionary, it means very important, excellent, or remarkable. Good morning, guests, guests, judges, and fellow contestants. George W. Bush once said, there is no limit to the greatness of America. I believe in this quote because America has achieved many memorable things. For example, Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon. That was a milestone. He was the first man to set foot on the moon. Neil used signal words when he landed, such as, the eagle has landed. When he said these words, that achievement captured so many hearts in America. 
to know that this man, Neil Armstrong, made history in 1969 will forever be remembered, even on the darkest nights that America will have. Another American achiever is Walt Disney. Disney is one of the most recognized companies in the world because of Walt's creative and full of life feature films and cartoons. Disney went from sketching a rabbit to running a multi-billion dollar empire. He strived to become great. Not only has he left us with an inspiration, but he has told us that we should never give up because nobody cares what they think. Nobody wants, nobody cares what they think. Let's not forget the American achiever, Amelia Earhart. She was the first woman to, to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. She was also the first woman to fly an auto gyro. Her commitment to flying required hard work and bravery. Not only does this, does this show greatness, but it shows that we should never give up. So we can work our way to greatness, as Neil Armstrong, Walt Disney, or, or Amelia Earhart did, or we can just live life on the sidelines. Like there's nothing special we can do to help change the world. My dad once told me to keep up the good work because it pays off. We never know what the future may hold for us. So think about it. Do you think you're strong enough to do as something as remarkable as these people? Neil Armstrong, Amelia Earhart, or Walt Disney? The world is waiting for you to make greatness because we are the next generation. I am proudly to re-announce that George W. Bush once said, there is no limit to the greatness of America. Thank you. Hello, judges, audience, fellow contestants. Did it ever occur to you about the many good qualities we have as Americans? I am proud to be an American citizen for so many reasons. Here are just a few of them. Every day and every night, we have men and women in the branches of the armed forces fighting for our country and our freedom. Without their help, we'd probably not have the liberty to make our own choices or have our own opinions like most other countries. I am proud to say that both of my grandfathers have served in the United States Armed Forces. Having fought and survived battle, they both have no regrets for serving for their countries. We have rights as individuals and don't fall under a dictation of one human who is just as equal as all of us. The number one thing people should display is their pride to be an American. Many people nowadays show their respect by hanging the American flag in front of their homes and places of business. Our flag is not just seen as bright red, white, and blue. It is for showing that we do have freedom, dignity, and true meaning of being an American. More and more of our American patriots are expressing their beliefs. Many of these people's actions speak louder than words. As a united country, we should never take our freedom for granted because people are dying every day for us to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Not everyone wants to fight. The least we can do is show respect for the families who have lost their loved ones due to battle. Have you heard about 9-11 and what happened that day? Well, it all started when we had a plane full of what we thought were all good citizens. You might wonder why we let certain people on the plane in the first place. Well, we did it because we are a land of kindness. We don't care what race you are. As long as you are in the United States of America, you're known as good citizens and are treated equally. In conclusion of all that had happened, just as Howard Zinn said, there is no flag large enough to cover the shame of killing innocent people. Thank you. January 15, what is the significance about that day? That was the day that civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr. was born. And 11 years ago, that was the day that I was born too. The same birthdays, huh? And the same dreams too. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Francesca Maglada. I started to think, what are the similarities between Dr. King and me? Well, we both have the same dreams. And yes, we both believe that dreams do come true. Everybody has a dream. No one in this world doesn't have a dream. Dreams that America can't fulfill. Dream. 
a big word. To dream is to imagine, imagining the things that you want to happen and longing for it to achieve in reality. I have a dream too, and so do my parents. To achieve my dreams, three important things are needed. Equality, peace, and freedom. Equality, equal opportunities in everything. Having the same rights as anyone else, no matter who you are and what you are. Because as what Eleanor Roosevelt said, without equality, there can be no democracy. Even Francis Wright emphasized that equality is the soul of liberty, that there is, in fact, no liberty without it. Then peace. How does it feel to live in a peaceful country? Amazing, right? Totally awesome. You wake up each morning not worrying if you'll survive until the end of the day, not thinking of being hurt or being imprisoned. Big thanks to our veterans, our dear soldiers. They sacrificed their lives for us and offering it until now so that we may live in peace. And lastly, freedom, as what Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Because living without freedom is like living without dreaming. Freedom to learn, to discover new things, freedom to play and enjoy life. But we have to be reminded that it is not enough to dream. You have to work hard for it and pray for it. Don't you know that I have to walk a mile every day just to get to school on time? But that is just a small sacrifice to me because I believe that this is my first step in achieving that dream. My dream of becoming a doctor one day. Like Walt Disney once said, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. What is your dream? Do you think you can make it happen? Is it even possible? Do you know the only person who can stop you from achieving it? Well, it is no one but you. I encourage you to never stop dreaming and to never give up because America is the door to your dream, but you are the key to make it happen. I thank you.